Taoism is a Chinese philosophy attributed to the ancient sage Lao Tzu. For several thousand years, it has had a powerful influence on Chinese culture. The wooden mountains in central China have always been strongly associated with emergence and development of Taoism. Tao philosophy has taught us that we need to live in harmony with the nature. And this thought has influenced China for generations. That's why in the Chinese culture, we can find this thought of exploring the nature and respecting it and being in awe of it. The yin yang is a symbol of opposites that are in balance. Dark and light, passive and active, female and male. All is in harmony in nature and Taoism encourages people to accept and embrace this harmony in their everyday lives. Wu Dangquan is the embodiment of this school of thought. The Wudang Mountains have been home to many devout Taoists and great Wudang Quan practitioners and teachers. By spreading the word about Wudang Quan, they have made it well known not only in China, but all around the world. Jake Tinnick was someone who, having heard about Wudang Quan, decided to come to its spiritual home and study it. After 20 years in the Wudan Mountains, he's recognized as an inheritor of the intangible cultural heritage of Wudang Quan. There are some conducting viewpoints, like there are some people who say like it speeds up your metabolism, uh. Uh, cold, drinking cold. Um, because your body has to digest faster, mm -hmm. so it's good for like sports, things like that. But that's the thing here also, when we're training all the time, your body is more resilient, it's more robust. Uh, and so drinking cold isn't so bad, but it's still hard on your digestion. I right? see. Short term, it's not so bad, but mm -hmm. over the long term is what we're really looking for. Yeah. Because for our practice, everything is about longevity, right? It's about yeah. long health. Now we're looking at the health in 20 years, mm -hmm. but now that I've experienced the benefit, Up it's there. hard to go back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. By mastering Wudang Quan, Jake has not only improved his own health, he's also been able to help friends suffering from health problems. I would spend a lot of time like bending over and working, yeah. and everyone I know has lower back pain, everyone I know oh, has yeah. shoulder pain, knee pain. And so like all these things, like just bringing some of the martial arts in my daily life has been the best. Uh, because like, you know, I wash dishes like this, mm -hmm. I tie my shoes on the wall. I'm mean, not just going to be practicing, I'm going to be using it. Using and it. that's where we don't just go to the gym, we don't just go to the, the Kung Fu school. We bring some of the mountain home with us. Ah, that's really cool. How do you, you know, explain the way you know, to stay healthy to people outside of China when they ask, you know. We have lots of um, cult, like conditioning forms. We have like your, your basic martial arts forms, mm -hmm. empty hand, just to give you your shape, you know, your flexibility, mm -hmm. your coordination, um, the sensitivity, the softness of the body. Yeah. So we make you soft before we make hard, you know. Ah. So it's like there's a lot of stretching involved. There's a lot of, um, we have full mm -hmm. range of internal and external, so we do conditioning practice, but we also do like meditation, mm -hmm. qigong, tai chi. So we have like the complementary soft with the hard practice. I see. So it's more of a comprehensive system huh. where we practice. In the course of exploring further into Wudang Quan, Jake has learned that there's much more to the disciplines than simply practicing the moves. They also lead him to a deeper understanding of the Tao philosophy that's behind it. You talked about the change, but I wonder, like, what specific things? Was it mm. just the practice of the martial arts? Or was it the philosophy? What, you know, changed? I think they can't really be separated. That's the beautiful part of it. Because yeah. when we're learning the practice, we're internalizing the philosophy. Ah, right? just so, a way to practice the philosophy. Right. We're talking about, like, Taiji. We're talking about, you know, removing 
force, like deflecting power away from you, so you don't get you don't get someone to strike you. Yeah. You know, you're finding the least the least uh, resistance. Mm -hmm. You're finding these pathways and kind of building this pattern of, of reaction. These are just moves, but then True. it has the spiritual kind of realm to it, the spiritual application. I mean, you are what you do, you are what you eat. So oh. the words that you say become your thoughts. Your oh. thoughts become your actions. Your actions become your habits. As the saying goes, there are a thousand hamlets in a thousand people's eyes. This applies to people who go deep into Tao culture. Tai Chi developed from human observations of nature. This explains, for example, why there's so many rounded S-shaped movements resembling spiraling galaxies. They represent an attempt to be united with the universe in a harmonious way, with the goal of achieving a peaceful, healthy lifestyle. How you understand the philosophy of Tao? It's always hard to summarize it. Like when we talk about Tao Te Ching, I like to start from the first phrase of the book, which is Tao Ke Tao Fei Chan Tao Ming Ming Fei Chan Ming. So it kind of roughly, very roughly translates into something like the Tao that we talk about is not the true Tao. Mm. Before you even talk about Tao, you have to explain how language is a frame that we use yeah. to communicate, but it, it doesn't re really restrict. The... It doesn't really carry the full meaning of what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. So the example I give people most often is, if you were to explain to me what is love. Mm -hmm. What is a feeling? What is a color? And when we talk about the Tao, we, we have to kind of show that it's mm -hmm. this pattern, this, this observation we make about nature. Mm -hmm. We say Tao Fadzaren, which is just the Tao follows nature. So we follow that as well. We follow nature. Mm -hmm. We follow the seasons. We follow the change in temperature. We follow mm -hmm. you know, the kind of natural flow of life. Mm -hmm. And all of this is kind of trying to find a path yeah. that is effortless and comes to us naturally. When we consider martial arts, we tend to think about fighting and aggression but from what I've seen of Hu Dang Chen, it's obvious that at its core is harmony. Harmony among people and with nature, along with inner peace, are its highest goals. Hu Dang Chen teaches us that we should seek and follow a way, which is the Tao, that allows us to live in harmony with the world. The way is achieved by finding a balance between opposites, such as action and inaction, fast and slow. After embarking on this journey to learn about Wutang martial arts and Tai Chi, I was focused on the moves. But then later I realized that its essence actually lies in the philosophy of Tao. And those moves are actually just an exercise of that philosophy. And now as I understand it, I think this philosophy is about harmony. It's about harmony between me and the nature, me and other people, and the harmony within myself. And that's why it became such a blessing for all the people who would come to Wutang to learn the martial arts and Tai Chi and become more healthy because they get to rediscover themselves and be filled with this positivity of the philosophy of Tao.